you know, when you're young, you have like these dreams and, you know, passions. And, but then when you, you actually get to that age, it's like, man, this is, this is a whole nother ball game. Sometimes I just make enough to get there and back and not even that, maybe get paid by pizza. I'd get so into what I was doing, people would be like, ah, uh, no, can you just play cha-cha slide? I was like, okay, this is not me. So what I did, I just sold my equipment and I was like, I'm not doing that anymore. Yo, what up party people, this is DJ Val and you guys are watching This Is Me TV. Keep it on lock. Well, music is music. What you do with it is what makes a difference. It was a total another world that we grew up in. My surroundings quickly just influenced who I was and influenced everything I did. My dad was an alcoholic and, you know, my mom was always working. I ended up leaving home really young. I was still in high school, you know, working two jobs. I quickly looked to my brothers, so everything they did, I wanted to imitate it. It was all the gang life. That was their life and their world, and I, I wanted to be exactly that. Somebody invited one of my brothers to church, and a lot of his friends at the time had gotten killed. My brother just walked away from a crazy lifestyle. So that trickled down to me. I'm, I mean, I'm a kid, I started going to church. You know, people used to ask me, like, what's your religion? And I don't know, I kissed a statue once, you know, like that's what I used to always think. I guess I'm that or whatever. It still took a while for me to like adapt and really just become like this sold out believer. I remember from that moment, it was like, yo, I'm gonna make a vow. I'm gonna make a promise. I wanna live this lifestyle. I think I was 22 or 23. I got my first phone call that was like, yo, we're gonna fly you out. And I was like, I'm 22 years old, I've never been on a plane. I don't know what to do. I managed to fly my turntables and rock this event. I was like, this is what I want to do. I heard Billboard call the 2010s, the decade of the DJ. So now all of a sudden, people want to book DJs as artists. Luckily, I've been blessed to survive in that whole scene and continue to grow with it too. I mean, people want to debate, like, how can you be a Christian and be a DJ? And then other people will say, are you a Christian DJ or are you not? Because I heard you drop some song that I didn't agree with. But at the end of the day, like, I'm going to impact in some way, some form, some fashion. I'll push them towards the cross. I'll push them towards your pastor. But if I can engage it correctly, then I can speak their language. And then in that, it's just a ton of doors that opens. My faith is, is really the foundation of everything I do. Well, I know for a fact that if I wasn't a believer and I, I didn't have faith in Jesus or faith in God, I feel like I would have been just doing what culture said I was supposed to be doing. But it's always the faith in me that, man, God gave me all these amazing blessings. You know what, I'm gonna work to keep them alive. I'm gonna work to be the best dad I can, be the best husband I can. Muhammad Ali didn't become the greatest boxer overnight. You know, Michael Jordan wasn't born an amazing basketball player. He worked at it. And you have to be consistent, because if you're not consistent, you're not going to grow. I still am who I am, so I'm going to put out things that reflect my faith, you know, reflect my family, reflect everything I believe in. I don't ever want to get so consumed in my art that I forget why I even started the art in the first place. It's like, man, God gave me a second chance, and I'm not going to ruin it. 